John and I are just starting out on our first hot tenting trip of the season. Got a little bit of snow here in Northern Ontario. We got our sleds loaded up and we're going to try and find somewhere to get our tent up and get the fire going. The little bridge? Yeah. You think we can use it? I don't know. Oh my. Fall right if you fall. <laughs> I just lost my balance a bit. Oh. Perfect. We want to camp around here because there's moving water that'll stay open. We need a water source for drinking and cooking. So we're tempted to camp around here. We crossed over that little bridge and see if there's anywhere good here. Could be set up right here. It's a little tight, eh? I think it's a little too small. Home sweet home. Hopefully. What's our first thought? My first thought is door here. Pipe, Pipe here. here. Okay. So door kind of like. Yeah, that should go. Eh? Yeah, I think. Oh, we should be able to make it work. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what that is. Can't tell from here. It looks robin-like, but yeah. It's got a red chest. But yeah. I, I would have thought they left. Yeah. I've got my anorak here that John got me for my birthday. I haven't had a good chance to actually have it out and wear it, so I'm pretty excited. I got one too, but I didn't even bring mine out. I feel like it's Hello. I'll get too hot in it. <laughs> yeah, people swear by them, so I'm pretty excited to to give it a go. It feels yeah, like a cozy good. home. How do I look? Ravishing. <laughs> so we're making some stakes here to stake in the four corners of the tent. How long do you want it? About two feet like this? Yeah. That one's quite long, right? Like, yep. Could be shorter. Alder is really like a junk species. It doesn't live very long. It grows in clusters like a weed, so it's a, it's a good one to harvest if you're going to harvest something. It's like the dandelions of the forest. <laughs> yeah. Swamp dandelions. And everything else that we use will be dead. And then these boughs, we had to clear off the bottom of this tree just to give enough room for the tent. But they're lower boughs, they don't receive as much sunlight, and this is a large enough tree that has tons of upper boughs to keep it healthy. And we'll line the bottom of our tent with them too. Might as well, since we have them. Just picked up this extension pole for painting, I think for painting tall ceilings, I'm not sure. Whatever it is, it'll do the job for us. It's up to eight feet, feet tall, and this will be the center pole for the tent. Again, rather than harvesting a stave from a live tree, this is nice, saves us doing that. She won't budge! Oh, well, I'll get her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Budge that. <laughs> Hello, hot dog tent. <laughs> tent always smells like hot dogs, just from the residual smoke smell. I don't think we ever cooked hot dogs in them. Nope. <laughs> Alright, we've got the four steaks in, so now I'll take the center pole. We lift this baby up. Okay, now for the guidelines. Okay, the tent's up, and we feel like we did a, a really good job of going all the guy lines out because it just feels roomier than normal in here. It's 11 by 11, so it's there's plenty of room, but yeah, it feels like a good setup. Oh, soup's gonna be good tonight. Mm. All the pipes fit inside of it. All four pipes will nest into one, but I just nest them twice. It's so much easier to get them apart. Just line the, the front corner of the tent here, just kind of where we walk in. It tends to get trampled down and dirty, so it's a nice spot to have them.
Just burying the edges of the tent really keeps the draft out and holds a bit more heat in. It's not a ton of snow, maybe six inches, but we're planning to leave this tent here for a bit, so it'll naturally accumulate quite a bit more. So sometimes we'll want to cook here and not start up the wood stove, just have a small outdoor fire. You don't need to process wood, you can just use junky stuff. So I brought on this little grill. There's a big rock here. I found two good sized rocks to move in here as well. So this will be perfect right here. Well, we're most of the way there for today. It's so much work getting this thing set up. It's rewarding and it's totally worth it, but fact is it's a lot of effort. So we're quite pooched and looking forward to making soup in the hot tent, getting that stove rip roaring. And uh, for a long sleep, not much daylight hours these days, so we'll have plenty of time to sleep. It's so nice being able to delegate jobs. We each just kind of take different jobs rather than sharing one and stepping on each other's toes. I was mostly setting up the tent, Aaron doing firewood, which she does best. We're doing a delicious butternut squash soup for dinner tonight, which will provide leftovers for tomorrow as well, because we're doing this massive pot in it. In this Mengrill's pressure cooker, it's a pressure cooker you can use on an open fire or on top of a stove. Um, and we love cooking up big meals in it here. You know, you, food prep can be a lot more work out here. So prepping a big meal in here can go a long way. Got garlic, two Granny Smith apples, carrot, Butternut squash store, our small town store in Northern Ontario only had one. So I substituted the second one for a buttercup squash, which apparently can be used. I love pressure cookers because you just dump everything in and it takes care of the rest. Got carrots in there. Uh, the seasoning is salt, pepper, sage, a bit of nutmeg and cinnamon. And it should be really good. Who doesn't love butternut squash soup? And I forgot one thing, coconut milk. I've never cut up, have you ever cut a butternut squash before? I have not. Okay, well, we're gonna learn together here. Okay. This is a sharp, sharp knife, but it's a tough nut to crack. Can hatch it? No, give me the full ax. That's a solid, Gourd. Okay, let's get these seeds out of here. I'm definitely wishing I had prepped this at home. <laughs> By the time I'm done, this is going to be dark. We don't have an immersion blender, so <laughs> the smaller the better. It's going to be more of a butternut squash soup, or stew, I mean. Good thing this knife is razor sharp. We're both making fine splits here. <laughs> Of a much different nature. I'm almost done. Half of the first squash. I swear it's taken half an hour. It's gonna feel good. I'll just keep chopping away. Yes, precious. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Chop your booty. Oh, yeah, listen to that draw. Oh, man, I love that sound. Speaking to you from the year 2040, I've nearly finished half of the squash. Elon Musk has taken over the world. Stop him. Actually, he's created a better world. Let him continue. Controversial. Mercifully finish those bloody squash. It honestly took an hour and a half to cut them both up. Because they had to be cut into so many small pieces. Because I don't have a blender. Oh, this is so much food. Why did I double the recipe? Oh, there's a large chunk of skin. Of skin. 
Not my skin. <laughs> I hope at not. At least. Um, yeah, there's no way we're consuming all this in two meals, but <laughs> leftovers at home. Perhaps with a blender. <laughs> oh, butternut squash stew. Oh. What is happening? I must have accidentally thrown in some garbage skin, thinking <laughs> in my delirium. I got the stove going for you. It's getting hot in here. An hour ago. Mm. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if she do. Hmm. Oh my uh, goodness. <laughs> This, I'm, I'm blaming this on the working conditions. I, I didn't get any breaks. We also got this nice serving spoon from Men Grills. Anton, our buddy in US, I think Minnesota. Thanks, Anton. Thanks for the Men Grills, man. Alright. Let some pressure build. Seal it just with these little latches and then screw this on to secure it. And the pressure will build. Some release nozzles here. Some good smelling steam. Mm -hmm. Got the buns over there. Good pile of wood. Vino Rouge. It's getting oppressively hot in here. It says uh, <laughs> 25 Fahrenheit, <laughs> almost 80. Or sorry, 25 Celsius, almost 80 Fahrenheit. Yeah, oppressively hot for me. I don't do heat well. Erin is quite comfortable in her sweater with her hood on. <laughs> um, and I guarantee it's hotter than that. Smell this, it. this is not caught up yet. Mmm. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so fresh good. Baked. Oh, I hope this soup works out. <laughs> Alright, let's pull that baby off. Yeah? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Well, it smells... Like a coleslaw. Smells good. Uh... Really seem to need a blender. <laughs> That's not not soupy at all. <laughs> I was hoping they would just melt a little. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not how things work. Oh no! Well, yeah, stir it around. The stirring will melt it. Oh no! It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. Here, I'll be your. I'll get it. Yeah, blend that. <laughs> I'll be your blender. There we go. Just gotta. Squish it against the sides. It'll be it's good. It's a disaster. No, it's starting no, to get... It's a disaster. I've ruined everything. No. You'll probably be dumping me now. Nah. I don't got much else going on, so... <laughs> you make this was the worst lawsuit. idea I've ever had. No, it's okay. You just thought it was gonna melt? You didn't expect no, this? No, I didn't think it was gonna melt, but... I didn't think it would look so whole. <laughs> Let's, let's taste it. Let's see what it's like. It's getting there. It's going to be good. Look, it's getting squishy now. Erin's uh, souped it up pretty good. Really mashing it like potatoes. It's okay, but it's the worst butternut squash soup I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it's so depressing. <laughs> so much work. It was like the most work I've ever put into a camping meal. Oh. Can we just soak it up with buns? Yeah. A good bun redeems any soup. Isn't that right? Don't spare my feelings. Just tell me it's <laughs> garbage. Mm. No, it's good. It's alright, yeah. A little. <laughs> and these buns are on point. Yeah, they're good buns. It's bedtime. Nothing left else in the tank. You have anything to say? I'm out. Nada. Okay. Good night. Good night. I love you. You love me? Yeah. Okay. I love you. Always. I thought you were saying it to the camera. So I've committed an unforgivable crime on this trip. 
I left a little bag, must be on the kitchen counter, with our canola oil and scotch. And the scotch is fine, but the oil, we were going to make bannock today. Um, so we're slightly crushed. We realized this last night, so we've had time to process it. <laughs> we'll manage. Uh, we've just got granola with banana and apple that we're going to rehydrate in some powdered milk. This coffee has been brought to you by Billy Bellows. <laughs> get that fire rip roaring. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where I like to get my water from liquid water, not from the snow. Here's this pot, 1.9 liters, packed pretty well with with snow. And we'll see what that boils down to. It won't be much. So that whole thing boiled down to there. Maybe 200 mils, 300 mils of water. And it looks... It looks dirty and milky. Milky. <laughs> Time. Peppermint mocha. Mm hmm It's quite good. Mm -hmm. Last night it was, uh, I don't know if it was a full moon or not, but it was a really bright moon. Um, it was overcast and it was still bright enough that uh, we didn't need flashlights. It was pretty cool. I always like those nights. few considerations here if you're thinking that this is really high impact camping that's true it is uh, but one we're only harvesting dead trees here for firewood these trees are not it's not like oh I think that's dead like they're dead dead spruce and maybe some fir the odd jack pine if we can find it is ideal uh, birch and poplar trembling aspen are also here but they are usually in not good condition to burn if they're sufficiently dead so we're mostly, mostly burning spruce. If we do need to harvest some live poles for let's say a, a stave for our center pole, we don't need to do that now that we have that painter's pole, or for poles for a bipod or a tripod to support the stove pipe, then uh, we use alder. Alder is a short-lived tree. It grows like a weed in the boreal forest here. It's no problem to harvest it. And then probably most importantly, if we're using the hot tent, we set up on a place where no one ever camps, no unestablished campsites, random place in the woods where not only is no one camping, probably no one's even going. Uh, the woods here are so vast, you may think that's that's impossible, but it's such a big forest up here that it's, it's entirely possible that no one will set foot here for a long time or even see that we had an impact. So those are kind of our guidelines for uh, minimizing a high impact activity. Trees like this are really quite nice when you're using hand tools without a chainsaw. Getting through some big logs is really a huge effort and then you got to split it with the axe. With these, sure, maybe they don't burn as long, but if you leave some as rounds without splitting them, they last pretty well. Oh my goodness! Alright. These are good to go. Sweet. Can you shave with it? Nice. Do those little bits curling off. Oh, you gotta love that. So to haul in, we use these Pelican Trek 60 sleds, and they're quite good. We like them a lot. They're such, such a simple solution. It's widely available, it's affordable. But in deep snow, with a heavy load in the sled, it can be a real, especially if you're going uphill, it can be really tough to pull them. So this season, we got some new runners. I think they're Teflon. 
and they just get they get drilled into the grooves here these three white pieces and they're like so smooth and slippery so yeah we definitely felt it on the way in it was just it was quite effortless so but snow's not deep yet we'll see when the snow gets deep but i think it'll, it'll certainly help to have these We just got back from a hike. We saw all sorts of different tracks when we were out there, which is always one of the fun parts of being out in winter. And now we're just going to put a little bit of spruce tea on the fire. So, grouse, squirrel, snowshoe hare, mm -hmm. fox, wolf or coyote, and more. Mm hmm. Some little bird prints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun to see those. I always enjoy that when winter comes. Mm hmm. I need some coffee. I'm gassed. And then the rest of that water, we're going to use spruce tips over there. Just steep that for 15 minutes. Ooh, that's good. I'm most surprised at how like mm. it's got some kick. Mm-hmm. Nice, it's really nice. Yeah. A little citrusy, zesty. Zest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great tea. We just got the stove all fired up. Love the stove. It's nice and easy to get going. It's not finicky. Yeah, we're happy campers. It's been a really good first trip so far. I was trying to make things serve two purposes out here. And for instance, this Olight. Pikachu! It's also a Pokeball. Ooh. Smells a lot better than the steam I blow. <laughs> Round two. Extra uh, rolls tonight. Extra rations. That looks a lot more like soup to me. <laughs> better luck today, maybe. We're just filling our Nalgene's with our boiling water. It's just a nice treat in the evening, on cold evenings, to have a hot Nalgene inside the sleeping bag. Well, it's eight o'clock. We were in bed for 14 hours, about 12 hours the night before. Mm. It's just so much darkness. You get so tired. What else are you gonna do? We're just gonna pack up. I don't want to start the stove because then you have to wait a long time for it to cool down and everything. So we've got a great camp here. I'm going to come back, make use of all this firewood, and enjoy this cozy little spot again. But we got to get home today. I gotta work. Beautiful moon last night. Super bright, casting shadows on the on the tent canvas. Mhm. Mm and then there was a big ring around it too. I don't think you were. You woke up to see that, but yeah, like the sun sometimes has a big ring around it, and I think that normally forecasts precipitation. But yeah, it's supposed to dump a couple of inches today, so. Oh, my back! Oh! Ah. Okay, let's get up. No. <laughs> we live here now. This is our home. We're just packing up here, finishing up this trip. We're gonna leave some stuff behind so John can come back on his own. So we're gonna leave the tent and stove and wood, pretty much anything that can stay that he can use, we'll, we'll leave for next time. It makes it a lot more feasible to come out solo and be able to spend the night, so, or a couple nights. Shouldn't have to worry about theft out here. Hopefully. No one should ever see it. <laughs> <laughs> I've left him, we've left him some wood. Lots. Overprocessed this time, which will happen when I come out. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a really good weekend and great warm up for me for the hot tenting season. And I'm pretty excited for this winter. I'll be back. All right. So, three nights have passed since Aaron and I left, and I'm back to uh, check up on things here. I've had some snow. Nice snow, 
But uh, last night there was a ferocious wind and I was a bit concerned about how the tent might have fared. So, Plus there's supposed to be snow tonight and more wind so I thought it would be a good time to check on it. I'm going to be packing up this camp on this visit and I've got two sleds, one inside of the other here. And I'm going to rig them up into some kind of train. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think it's going to be a, a fairly tough hike out with all this stuff. But we're going to test that system. First I'm going to get this tent back in order. Looks like it's caving in just a little with the snow weight. This is very heavy packing snow here. So it's good that the tent held up. Let's scoop this all down the side and it'll create extra insulation along the skirt. And it should pop back a little. It's guide out the trees and the trees, you know, they'll bend a little. They'll come in toward the weight. So once I get that off, they should spring back and the tent should be uh, more taut than it is right now. Oh, that's good. Everything's in order in here. And it was good to see that the painter's pole held up under that snow weight. Bit of a test for it, and it's good to know. A thermos is kind of a big, bulky, heavy item to bring in, but it's such a luxury to have hot coffee on demand out here without getting a stove or fire going. And another warm luxury I brought in on this trip is this sheet of R foil. I've had many people recommend something like this to me before. I think Reflectix is the same thing. Bubble insulation with an aluminum coating on both sides. So I'll add that to my sleep system. I've already got this closed cell phone pad. Just a regular old pad you'd buy anywhere, department store. This, and then for some reason, my inflatable mat is quite wet. There must have been some snow on it and it's actually above zero right now going down to minus 14 tonight which is a tough situation for winter camping when it gets warm the stuff starts melting and then it freezes solid overnight much easier when it's just freezing cold the whole time but with the three of these that should be plenty of insulation for minus 14 it's it's tons and it could probably get me down to minus 25 or so Heads up. Alright, forgot the scotch last time, I'm going to compensate for that this time. <coughs> I've combined my ketchup, mustard and red onion into one super garnish condiment. And I'm eating my supper on a bucket. This is how I live. Oh, I'm burning my wiener. I switched to my big wool anorak. It's getting colder. And I'm trying to wean myself off of my beloved wool sweater that I was wearing earlier. It's uh, becoming increasingly tattered despite my best sewing efforts. It's time to migrate. It's going to be slow. I'm very attached. Five o'clock, it's gonna be dark soon. Time to light this thing up. Flue damper is wide open to start. Otherwise, it'll be real smoky in here. I like to have some 
splits with the inside facing up. Those catch nicely and then just build a, a small fire on top of it with kindling and fine splits. We also put a little shim under the back leg of the stove to elevate it just ever so slightly, just a degree or so, so that the back end of the stove is higher. That helps the smoke go to the back of the stove and up the pipe. And I'll just add a few sticks, maybe a, a larger split, and work my way up to rounds. I won't put any rounds in to start, it's too hard to light them. And that is one of the sweetest sounds in the world. This is what it's all about. All the work that goes into hot tenting is pretty much all for this moment. This beaver pond water is one of my last choices for water, but It'll quench my thirst tomorrow, just the same. Nice to have some sanitized water, and I'll keep it this kettle close to the stove here, just to keep it warm. Make sure it doesn't freeze and ruin my aluminum kettle. Got the fire down to just rounds now. Just about throwing lots of heat. Plenty of warmth off of that. Got my sleeping pad all dried out on the line at the top of the tent where it is very hot. Up there, very hot. Down here on the ground, cold. But that's what the sleeping system is for. And this is abundantly warm. Even before I inflated my pad, I felt like this was plenty. The CCF pad and this R foil, I wasn't cold at all on the bottom. And no matter how warm this tent is, no matter what sleeping bag I have, on. If the insulation beneath me is insufficient, this is just an endless cold source. The ground you will never warm up. So it'll make you cold forever if, if you don't address this. And this seemed to, to do quite well. But now, now, I'm living in luxury. But one problem. <laughs> Sleeping pad seems to make farting noises um, pretty much constantly when squished against this R foil. So next time, I think I'll put it underneath. I'm here alone, and I'm tired. I don't think I'm going to cha bother to change it now. But next time, yeah, I'll try this underneath on the bottom and uh, try to reduce the sleeping system flatulence. Good morning. <laughs> coffee and I'm do some dehydrated curry, veggie curry. A little French vanilla. Some beautifully Noe Dawn. Noe Dawn. Get that curry <coughs> up in there. Breakfast is served. It's gonna be a real haul to get out of here today with everything in one load and the two sleds with this rig that I've never tried before. Worst case scenario, I do two trips. It just take longer and most of it's up a hill too, so yeah. So hot in there. Oh, can't even have the door open. This 
stove is still incredibly hot. I'm just waiting for it to die down so I can pack up. Feeding, drinking coffee. It's nice. It's nice and warm in here. All packed up. I'm just gonna get my sleds back to the trail before I create a train. It's just, it'd be too awkward to get it through the bush here. Left the firewood here if anyone ever happens to, to come here. Pile up the boughs there too. It's been a nice camp. I could just stay here all winter, but that would just be a bit dull. I'm gonna make this quick because I'm getting cold. All the system is, is one 10 length piece of PVC cut into two five foot lengths. I didn't want to change either sled to the point where like the change is irreversible because Aaron and I still need to use these in tandem sometimes. So all I did is take the string that's attached to this sled that comes with it. At home I had some pins kicking around. You could use various things, but these pins worked well. I just drilled some holes in the PVC, stick that pin through and secure it into that loop. Do the same thing over here. Cross the pipes, pull that helps the train track better. And then in here, I just drilled a hole. I put some paracord through and just a small loop there to uh, attach this carabiner onto. On this end of the PVC, drilled another hole, just a little loop of paracord. Put the loop into the carabiner, same here. And that's my train. It's just what I came up with uh, I just I, the night before I left, so hopefully it'll work. I've never used it properly before, so we'll see. It's fairly heavy, but it's doable. I'm going uphill here, so it's not bad. Couple of birds there, beautiful red. I think they're pine gross beaks. Overall, I'd say this is working really well. Some people will also use PVC poles from the sled to their body. I just don't want that because I don't have to go downhill that often. Most of the work I'm doing is fairly flat, and when it is downhill, I just walk it like a dog pulling hard on a leash, you know. And then I've got this big loop of nylon strap, and I just put that over my shoulder. Erin likes it around her waist. I really don't like it around my waist, but different strokes for different folks. This is working for me. You might think that I should get a freight toboggan. Well, that would be a lot more expensive than that PVC pipe and scavenged items from around the house. And I also really like the pulks. I'm quite attached to the system now because I can haul in gear with Erin or Solo and then dump out the gear, set up camp, and then use these pulks to cart my ice fishing gear around the, uh, around the lake. And hopefully I can ice fish very soon. Getting close to safe ice, I'm sure. Well, that's camp number one in the books for this winter. I've never had a lot of time off in the winter. I always saved it for summer. And this year, I can actually do something adventurous. So I'm looking forward to that. This is just a, a warm up trip, really and I can't wait to start fishing and doing longer winter trips.